Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Alarm Control's number 10C guard ring. This is uh, used on their K5 and K13 uh, switches, which I am not looking at that switch. I imagine they're just momentary push buttons um, is likely what they are. Probably a single pull, double throw, a form C con uh, 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 switch that is inside of there. And this guard ring would be installed down to the unit so that you could just push that button and obviously give that button itself a little bit of protection with this aluminum guard ring. Let's take some basic dimensional properties of the item. They have it at 7 eighths diameter. I would say that that would be accurate. Overall height, about 7 sixteenths. They even give the, t the thread type 15 30 seconds. Uh, 32 threads per inch. That's interesting. It's nice to know the thread type on stuff. You never know when you might be trying to hybrid or the technical term Frankenstein pieces together. Um, it's nice to know the, uh, the thread type. I've done that with stuff in the past. Um, not related to alarm controls, but Rickson used to manufacture Electromagnet, pardon me, electric deadbolts many years ago, and it's a very unusual faceplate. It's not, I think it's nine inch, was nine inch long, maybe two inch wide, wouldn't be that wide, maybe inch and a half wide. Um, it's an otherwise standard electric deadbolt, but it has a really funny faceplate. So, had Rockwood, and I think these are all sister companies, by the way, is Alarm Controls owned by Asa Abloy? Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm speaking about their sister companies, Alarm Control sister companies. Right, so no harm, no foul. Um, <clears throat> had another sister company, Rockwood, make me that nine inch by inch and a half wide faceplate and then gave them all the function holes uh, for the deadbolt that I was using from a company that I won't mention only because it's not a sister company, it's not an ASA company who makes electric deadbolts. And that would have the ball auto relock and then the bolt coming through it and then it would have the six holes for the... I'll actually show you one. I realized I had them right behind me. That Rick's and part number was a 401DR and here is a... Here is a... Um, here is, and I'll hold it up backwards, uh, here is the plate that Rockwood made for me. Here is the plate that came with the electric deadbolt from the manufacturer, just holding it. Okay, there, there it is, covering up the logo. And you can see that the old Rickson, which was a 401DR, was a larger plate. Well, I took this manufacturer's electric deadbolt unscrewed the faceplate from the deadbolt, swapped the larger faceplate onto it. The one problem that I had was, what are the size of these threads? That turns out, pardon me, what are the size of these threads for the ball auto relock? Turns out it's a three quarter 27 or some extremely strange thread type. The point of the matter is it's really nice to know the thread type. Um, and it was not easy. It was easy to get the thread type from the manufacturer. But I sensed I was kind of sliding in there um, when I have also asked for information um, from that same manufacturer to be told that it's not available. Um, and what I asked for actually was a technical drawing of the... Uh, faceplate itself so I wasn't measuring and then laying it out by hand. Sorry for that segue. It's nice to know the thread type is what I'm driving at. So here's what it looks like. Speaking of what it looks like, let's switch to the screen view and let's take a closer look. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here is the item that we are looking at. Let's take a look at some photographs. The packaging, top view from the back side, a profile, and then showing that thread type there. Okay, 
That extended description information I was reading from is here. And fits push buttons K11 and K13 and switches K5, K13. And then the rest of that so that we um, you can review that. There is a cut sheet here. Let's take a look at the cut sheet. Okay, they actually have a cut sheet on this guard ring alone. There you go. Now, let's take a little deeper dive into what it's used on. I'm going to take the K13 part number. I'm going to copy it. Control C and then click the link here below this video to the manufacturer's page. From there, we can pull up their product catalog. Allow that to load. And then we'll do a find function, control F for K-13. And there it is, there's a push button right there. You might have an application where you don't need a guard ring, I suppose, but I would imagine that you do. 10C guard ring available separately. Okay, so this K-13 is gonna be a normally open, momentary red push button. Um, normally open. So this would be uh, an open loop type of item. This would be considered a single pole, single throw. It's literally like a light switch, except that this you have to uh, keep pressure on the button to keep the light turned on, so to speak. So momentary means that it's like a doorbell. You push it, you release, and the doorbell will stop when it's done with its, you know, sequence. Um, if this was normally closed, that means that this switch would be providing constant current all the time, which in this application you may not want. You know, if it's an, if it's an AC powered electric strike, you would want a normally open push button uh, so that you're not powering the strike. A fail secure AC uh, electric strike. Um, fail secure meaning no power, it's locked. So you would close the circuit with this push button to allow current to flow AC because that will then buzz and you'll hear the audible buzzing sound when you buzz someone in. So that's the K13. Let's see what else this works with. A K11 it works with and a K5. Let's take a look at the K11. Catalog is not matching us with a K11. That could be a discontinued unit. And then I believe there was a K5. And interestingly, the K5 is... Um, listed as an MCK5, which obviously just has to be a, um, well, I don't, okay, I, well, I think what they're doing is not showing any photographs of it. Oh, no, forgive me, that's not the case. Yeah, it's a single gang, so... You know, K5 is not in here. I don't know if I have an older catalog. Now I've got one from 2016. Let's see if it's in there. K-5. Yeah, it's not. <clears throat> hmm. There wouldn't be a guard ring with a key switch. You could certainly have a faceplate with a push button. Obviously, those are momentary maintained, momentary, really, uh, switches. So I don't see where that's coming from. And it is on their cut sheet. So actually, it's not. I'm not sure where we're getting this from. So I'm going to have to say that this is wrong. So I will have, by the time you're seeing this, we'll have this corrected. And I did pause the video to correct that. So, sorry about the wild goose chase. Guard ring used for, okay? Um, and there you go. So that link to the manufacturer's page will allow us to obviously get to that catalog, obviously a couple of older catalogs, but also all of the alarm controls products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation as seen here. A link to the manufacturer's website as well. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. In conclusion, why might you need this? Hard to say. Maybe there's been some vandalism, things have been removed, um, maybe hardware's been repurposed and parts got lost, maybe damaged, maybe it's done its job and protected the push button, but it did get damaged to the point where you can't get your finger anymore uh, inside of there easily. Who knows? Um, 
alarm controls is, um, and I see it uh, from the catalog, they're a part of the technical service group in Phoenix, at least in, currently in Phoenix, Arizona, that I most typically communicate to regarding Adam's right. Uh, Hess, Folger Adam, obviously alarm controls is all in that department as far as I know. And I can tell you that, um, and again, I'm speaking really about Adam's right topics, another sister company to door controls, aluminum storefront hardware, electric strikes, panic devices, specialty hardware. Their tech support department is exceptional when it comes to responsiveness. I always get a response. I've been emailing them for two decades, um, kind of, maybe 15 years. I always get a response, and for that, to them, I say thank you very much. Any questions on the Alarm Controls 10C guard ring or any other Alarm Controls product, please feel free to reach out to us, and thank you. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.